I think these two together create this like, it's like a, it's what, what are those things called? The Snuggies? The Snuggies! It's this like is a, a Snuggie. Snuggie food wine pairing. This week on Follow That Psalm, we're headed to Del Posto, the flagship restaurant of the Batali and Bastianich Empire, and one of the very few restaurants with four stars from the New York Times. We're joined by Jeff Porter, the Beverage Operations Director for over 20 restaurants, including Italy, New York City, La Serena, and Casamono, to talk about his favorite grape, the unsung hero behind Barolo and Barbaresco, Nebbiolo. Today, we're going to be tasting two wines, one from Barolo and one from Barbaresco. We store all our wines down here in the wine cellar, temperature controlled, obvi. I'm going to hop in here and get the Sori Pitin from Pitin, the Barbaresco, and then we're going to go over to the other part of the cellar and get the Barovia Villero 2003. You want to come with me? Yes. Really do. <sighs> yes! Can I come all the way in there? Of course! Woo! Oh, this is amazing. So everything is tagged, everything has an individual bin number. We are looking for 10376. Okay. 10376. So this is the Pitin, sorry Pitin, Barbaresco 2004. This is the Barbaresco we're gonna try today. We hold the wines till we feel they're ready. So 2004, 2005 are kind of the, the common younger vintages that you'll find on our wine list currently. Wow. And so this is where you store it all? This is where we store just the Barbaresco section. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, why wine? I was in college, 95, 99, and that's when like the Food Network was like, and it's and it's like for me in its prime. It's you know Molto Mario, Emerald Lagasse. You know my favorite show was Grillin. I think it was Grillin and Chillin. It was like Bobby Flay and yep. some other dude. I was super into food. I started working as a dishwasher at a, a family-owned German restaurant, so making like schnitzels and stuff like that. Oh yes. And I, I felt like the owner felt sorry for me, so every every night he would give me a glass of wine, but then he'd tell me the stories. And as a, as a curious person, um, some would say nerd, um, I wanted to know more about what was in the wine. Why, why was there a story to go with it? So we have to know, what's it like to work with Mario Vitale and Joe Bastianich? So this is in the top three questions I've gotten in my entire career uh, with here. Working with Joe and Mario is, it's its an honor, first of all, like like I said before, I watched Mario all through college. I learned how to cook, basically watching Mario Batali. And then Vino Italiano was written by Joe Bastianich and David Lynch. I still pinch myself. I've worked for them for eight years and I, I still can't believe that I'm working for two people that before I even knew them, helped create my career. For those that are not as familiar with Nebbiolo in general, can you just a quick overview of Nebbiolo? Yes. Nebbiolo is the one of the foremost varietals in northern Italy. But Nebbiolo is most famous in these two regions, Barbaresco and Barolo. Nebbiolo is a, is a varietal that it produces, in general, wines that are a bit lighter in color, uh, but have really firm tannins high acidity, beautiful ethereal aromatics uh, in, in textural components that, that make these wines, in my opinion, the greatest red wines on earth. Okay, you say um, this is a very tannic wine. How do people know it's tannic, like in their taste? So the best analogy I have for people to like understand what tannin is, you've ever, ever gone to the dentist office and they stick cotton balls in your mouth? <laughs> That's what tannins feel like. Okay. They, it's, it's drying out your mouth. But as the wine evolves, it becomes super earthy, very elegant, sexy even. Yes, sexy um, for sure. Um, just the, the, they're, they're beautiful to me. Barolo and Barbaresco are both 100% Nebbiolo. So Nebbiolo is the varietal or the grape used to make the wine. Barolo and Barbaresco are the place. Love it. Thank you. All right, let's taste it. So Nebbiolo is an oxidative varietal, so one of the telltale signs, especially like when you're blind tasting, is you know, you kind of look at the hue. Okay. And you know, a lot of people would take this to Nebbiolo Sangiovese or sometimes Tempranillo. Okay. Um, before they even smell it. Based on the um, look. But based on that 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 kind of orange hue. But there's a there's a deeper core of color in the Barbaresco mm -hmm. right now versus 
The transparency the, of the Barolo. The Barolo, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The first wine that Jeff's pouring today is the 2004 Sori Paitin Barbaresco. Let's try the, the Barbaresco. Okay, Barbaresco, yes. So this, on this one, I'm picking up more of those oak <sighs> notes. Do you feel it? The vanilla, the cinnamon, the vanilla, spice. Vanilla, definitely. I mean, but so behind cherry. that is, the, it, it almost reminds me of kind of like cherry pie. Cherry pie. Really that lush, plush fruit, but juicy. You feel the tannins. I do feel the tannins. Feel a lot of tannins. Feel a lot of We have a tannic cherry pie on yeah, our hands. Yeah, it's tannic cherry pie. We need something with this wine that has some fat in it, some richness to to balance out the tannins. The tannins. The second wine Jeff's pouring is the 2003 Barovia Villero Barolo. And then the Barolo. <laughs> yeah. You know, automatically. You get that kind of more dried cherry fruit note. Um, it's a little more elevated in alcohol, but it's still super classic in, in its aromatics of being that, that cherry, floral, dried flowers, earthy. A little, am I getting leathery something? Yeah, definitely. There's leathery, and, and this leathery. is again, it's like what, a we're 2017, this is 2003. So you know, you're looking at, at almost 14 years. Wow. When would you have the Barbaresco versus Barolo for your meal? And when do you choose one versus the other? Barbarescos tend to be a bit lighter, a little, they, they're sooner to drink. Yeah, and so Barolos, you drink them a little younger. Exactly. Barolos okay, tend it. to be a little firmer, a little more in structure. What do you Whereas, mean by firm? Firm, like a little more aggressive tannins. Okay, um, so they're like, a little bit more turner. Exactly. Okay. Denser. But today, and I think it's due to the vintage variation and the way that the wines are made, they've inversed themselves. So this Barbaresco, the Sori Pitein, a little denser, a little firmer, more tannic. The Brovia is a little softer, actually. Right. Wow, I feel like it's almost backwards of what I would have thought, that of such tannic young wine, I'm not used to them being as tannic. I'm thinking as older wines get more tannic. Is that? In general, a younger <laughs> wine is gonna be more tannic oh. and aggressive, and as it ages, it softens. Think about an individual. Think about your young self. Right. You, in your youth, yeah, exactly. You're partying, you're like going out, you're like, <laughs> uh, but as as you age, you mellow. Do you? you? Like, <laughs> I, have, I, de I definitely have. Like, I don't, I like, no, I'm a I, do. I like being at home. Yeah. I like cooking mm -hmm. my, for myself. I like being with my family. Yeah. Um, versus when I was younger. And I'll also like, I have my opinions and I have my own ideas about certain things but I'm easier to accept things. And I, I feel that's how older wine gets. It's like, oh, yeah. it's easier to accept. It's just like the old wine's like, here I am. Or younger wine's like, Rrr! Oh, like I've got something to prove. And here like, right. no, I just am good. Right. Okay. So can you give us maybe three things that go well with the Nebbiolo grape? Absolutely. As far as food? Um, so when I'm thinking about pairing Nebbiolo, I'm thinking about fat content. Okay. Um, I'm thinking, so <clears throat> one of my favorite pastas from Piemonte is called Agnolotti de Plin. So it's a little uh, ravioli that's folded to look like a hat. Oh, and it's yes. usually stuffed with a uh, veal or pork, earthy rich stock with this, this pasta is great. Truffles, obviously during the fall and winter is like what Alba is known for, the white truffle. The two best preparations for that are a fried egg that you just shave the white truffle on and maybe a little bread. So when I the feel yolk, like you just changed my when life. the yolk is, is busted and you eat all the you try to sop it up, you just dip dip the bread in, get that and have some nebbiolo. And then another great prepar preparation is, is called tagliatelle. Okay. Tagliatelle. It's a it's a thin egg based fresh pasta that you with tons uh, of eggs, with, right? With, like with, twenty two yeah, eggs yeah. in a thing. A like lot of eggs. Crazy egg yolk. With so um, good. with butter mm. and, and cheese. And then you just shave truffles on top of that. It's interesting, so like, you want simple things that have richness, richness to them okay. to balance the, the, the tannic and acidic nature of the varietal. And uh, those are some of my favorite favorite dishes. The, the dish Thank that you. Chef Mel's so gonna great. show us right now is pretty amazing. Today's pairing is with an earthy and unctuous pasta from executive chef Melissa Rodriguez. The Gorella Genovese is a rolled pasta stuffed with porcini mushrooms, braised pork shoulder, and basil pesto topped with a Parmesan frico and drizzled in pork jus. If I was to okay. bite a food first. Bite a food first, got it. And I'm assuming we get everything in the bite, right? Like mm -hmm. everything, the sauce, the crisp on top. Mm. Okay, oh my goodness. 
The mushroom is really kind of outrageous. It's so earthy and so velvety and creamy. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bechamel. Oh my goodness. Now try it with that barbaresco. So remember, this when one. we first had the barbaresco, it was really tannic. Mm -hmm. Now try it right now. Okay. Wow, I felt like it got lighter. Mm -hmm. Is that the right? Is that what that it is? Just, it just, it, they, the molecules come together and they balance each other out. Wow, that was really extraordinary. It's just so velvety. It's like lusciously velvety mushroom, earth, cream. You do get pork and you kind of just unctuousness of pork. I like that. It's, it's an unctuous dish. All right, now taste the burlo. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. It's like a huge blanket and I just like pull yeah, it over this, my this, face. This, like, I think these two together create this like, it's like a, it's, what, what are those things called? The Snuggies? The Snuggies! It's this like is a the Snuggie snuggy food migraine. Yeah, like I just want to like zip myself in. I mm -hmm. feel so cozy and good and like warm all over. Wow. <laughs> it's so incredible. That's the essence of Del Posto and that's, that's, it's supposed to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. Like cozy, comfortable, but mm -hmm. not overly full. Right. This has been rich, unctuous, and completely delicious. You've been followed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much to Jeff Porter and Del Posto for their hospitality. If you like our videos, be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.